Hi everyone, in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to take a look at the vent setting, Airway Pressure Release Ventilation, or APRV for short. While it's not the most commonly used ventilation technique, it certainly has some interesting benefits and in and of itself is quite unique. Before getting started, if you like my videos, hit the like button, subscribe, and pass it on to someone else you think it might help. So, like all of our vent videos, we're going to discuss what we dial in, what the machine physically does, and what we get out of it. So we'll write APRV here for the mode. Now the things we're going to dial in are going to be different than our traditional vent settings. We're going to dial in, and I'm going to explain all of these, a P high, a P low, a T high, and you guessed it, a T low, where P in this case stands for pressure and T in this case stands for time. So the way that I look at this setting is I look at it like BiPAP or bi-level positive airway pressure. Normally when we put a BiPAP mask on, the machine delivers a pressure to the patient. So we'll indicate that by this big arrow, usually something higher during the patient's inspiration in order to help take a breath. And then the machine delivers a lower pressure, which we'll indicate here by this smaller arrow, on expiration. And this is to help facilitate the patient being able to breathe off a little bit easier than trying to have to breathe against that high inspiratory pressure. This ventilator setting is very similar conceptually. The machine delivers a pressure at a P high that we dial in for a set amount of time, or T high. Then the machine performs a pressure release where it drops the pressure from P high to P low, which we set for the T low preset amount of time. So again, just to rehash, I know that's a little uh, complicated. So what it does, first it delivers pressure high that's programmed for the time high. And we're gonna give you kind of basic numbers uh, in a minute. And then the second part is the release, which is where it delivers P low for T low. And this will all make sense again in a second when I kind of go over some numbers and, and a graph for you. So if we were to look at a pressured graph with pressure on the Y axis and time on the X axis, what you're going to see is something that looks like this, where the pressure goes up for an amount of time and then it drops and then it goes back up and stays there for that amount of time and drops and then goes back up and stays for that amount of time and then drops. Where this is your P high and we'll do it in darker blue. This is your P low and this is your T high and we'll do, I guess in brown, this is your T low. And so the goal of using this vent setting is primarily to prevent alveolar collapse by keeping the lungs pressurized a majority of the time. This prevents derecruitment of the lungs and is supposed to prevent alve and as a result prevent alveolar collapse. And when you prevent alveolar collapse, you allow for the maximum amount of VQ matching possible. Because as alveoli collapse, as you develop atelectasis, you're basically forming a shunt, which is bad. Now, what you're gonna see on this setting is as the, pa the patient will breathe over this kind of, over these bumps here, uh, the patient will take a breath during these pressurized times and also down here and also up here. And so you'll see little oscillations in the pressure as the patient spontaneously breathes the same way that they would with a BiPAP mask on. They just have a continuous pressure that is then released for some amount of time. But otherwise they breathe normally or on their own through it. So let's give you some numbers for some context. A P high really should not go more than 30 um, centimeters of water, no greater than 30 cm H2O. Um, so usually, you know, mid 20s is a good place to be. And then our P low will either be zero or 
greater than zero, usually up to five. And there's an important distinction here, and um, pluses to minuses is for each. Using a pressure gradient um, with zero means, or greater than zero means that there's less alveolar collapse because there's always some positive pressure keeping the lung open as opposed to zero, which would result in alveolar collapse. This also means that a smaller pressure gradient between the P high and the P low, so the driving pressure is lower and there's lower swings in your tidal volume. Conversely, having a P low greater than zero will make it harder for expiration and can promote hypercapnia because you're trying to breathe out against a pressure that is not zero. So next is your T high. And this is usually going to be somewhere from 10 to 16 seconds. And your T time should usually be eight to 10 times greater than the T low to ensure that the patient remains in a P high time at least 90% of the time they're on the vent. A normal T low, on the other hand, may be something to start like 0.5 or 0.6 seconds. Now these are not ratios like a um, I to E ratio. These are literally raw seconds of time to be in either P high or P low. Now the wean for this, and we'll write it over here, is called a drop and stretch. And it'll make sense in a second. We're going to gradually drop our P high and we're going to gradually increase our T high hence the name drop and stretch, with the goal to be to gradually come down to the amount of pressure required to keep the alve alveoli open until we reach a state with a relatively low P high that the patient is still oxygenating on and a very prolonged T high, which would basically be the same thing as putting the patient on CPAP, continuous positive airway pressure. So the way that I think about weaning for this is that we're trying to put the patient from a BiPAP mode almost to a CPAP mode on the ventilator. And then once we get successful CPAP, basically, we're going to switch them over to a more traditional ventilator setting. So you're going to most commonly see this in, and I'll draw it over here, used in ARDS. Um, but I do want to mention, there is no evidence at this time to support improved outcomes in the lane of decreasing morbidity and mortality with the use of this vent setting. It does not change, I want to be clear, morbidity and mortality. Now there has been some evidence to say that it increases ventilator free days and decrease ICU days as a secondary finding, but again, there is no change in morbidity and mortality. The only thing that's been shown to decrease morbidity and mortality with ARDS is low tidal volume ventilation per the ARDSnet trial. So as always, I hope this was clear, especially for a uh, setting many really haven't necessarily used or seen before. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out. Um, oh, I'm sorry, we didn't uh, mention what we get out. In this case, we're going to get out a tidal volume uh, because the patient, like I said, is going to breathe over this pressure and it will vary uh, greatly depending on how much they're taking in, if they're in a pressure release time or a high pressure time. Uh, I apologize again. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, please write in. Uh, please let me know if you found this video simple and helpful for APRV.